How long does it take for any character to touch water in each and every Star Wars movie? Well, today, I found the answer to that question, and it turns out that the Star Wars movie where they touch water the quickest in is the one and only Solo, a Star Wars story. I gotta be honest, when I was finding the timestamps for this video, I could not for the life of me think of a single time where they touched water in this movie. I mean, generally, it is set on very dry planets, but as soon as I started watching it, I mentally slapped myself in the face, because literally four minutes and two seconds into the movie, Lady Proxima emerged like a serpent from the weird pool of water that she sits in. It had totally slipped my mind that this happened, and now that I think about it, how the heck does someone build an entire freaking crime syndicate when A, they can't be exposed to light, and B, they can only exist if they're in a bathtub? I mean, it really makes no sense. Regardless, that's the quickest that any character touches water in any Star Wars movie, just over four minutes. But the next movie on this list isn't too far behind, and that is The Phantom Menace, because this list is going from the movie Water is Touched the Quickest in to the movie where Water is Touched the Slowest, and The Phantom Menace comes in second at just 10 minutes and 53 seconds. I actually thought that this would be when Jar Jar was showing Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan to the Gungan City because they swim underwater for like 20 minutes there. But in reality, the scene where water was first touched was the very first time we see Qui-Gon Jinn on Naboo. The first second that he's running, he steps right in this big old puddle of water. And this is off topic, but I freaking hate it when they do this in movies. I mean, these mother truckers will need to cross like a small stream or go around a puddle or something like that. And they walk right through it as if it's nothing. Everyone and their mother knows how annoying it is to get your shoes and socks wet. And most of the time, there's a perfectly good path around the water. It always pisses me off. Anyway, that was a tangent, but yeah, Phantom Menace is at number two, and at number three, we're jumping all the way to the end of the originals. That's right, it's episode six, Return of the Jedi, with 14 minutes and 13 seconds. Now, I'm going to level with you guys. This was the most surprising movie on this list, in terms of when water was actually touched. I could not for the life of me think of a single time where I remembered any character actually touching water, but boy was I wrong. If you think you already know where someone touched water, then pause this video and write it in the comments down below. But the answer was actually right after Jabba the Hutt feeds that dancer to the Rancor. As soon as she's dead, he goes to grab a nice little tasty treat for himself, cause you know, why not? And BAM! Shoves his fat hand right into a bowl of water. I would not have guessed this in a million years, and I certainly never remembered it. But yeah, it only took a little over 14 minutes. Next up at number 4, we're not done yet, it's The Force Awakens. And The Force Awakens has double the time that Return of the Jedi does, coming in at 27 minutes and 11 seconds. Again, Force Awakens was not a very wet movie, as far as I remember, for lack of a better term. So I wasn't too sure where I would find some water. But sure enough, just under 30 minutes in, Finn crash lands on Jakku, and wanders the desert for miles until finally he stumbles into town half dead. And that's where, without a second thought, he joyfully plunged his head underwater at this random watering trough next to this burly brute right here. And lucky for us, he did too, because I don't think there's a single other time someone touches water in The Force Awakens, unless you count snow, and I don't, because I'm talking about liquid water here, obviously. But you know where there is water? Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. And to be honest, I instantly knew where I would find water, and plenty of it, when I first started making this video. Because, as you might remember, Kamino is entirely a water planet, so it's no surprise that Obi-Wan Kenobi lands there hops out of his ship, and boom, gets hit with some rain. This takes place at the exact timestamp of 41 minutes and 32 seconds. And of course, it had to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. I swear, he pops up everywhere in Star Wars. It's almost like he's a main character or something. Hmm, who could have guessed? But actually, speaking of Obi-Wan, that reminds me. If you're enjoying this video so far, then do me a favor and smash that subscribe button because it did take some time to make. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And now we're going to move on to some of the movies where it took a little longer for them to touch some water. Up next at number 6, it's The Empire Strikes Back. And it takes 42 minutes and 21 seconds for someone to get hydrated. I guess it was kind of misleading to say that from here on out, the timestamps would get bigger and bigger, seeing as this one is literally less than one minute longer than it takes Attack of the Clones. But you know what they say, if it won't affect the pump, then it's not a problem. Surprisingly enough, the character who falls in the lake is actually R2-D2, when he hops out of Luke's X-Wing and goes head over heels into this nasty water. To be fair, it would be hard to keep your footing, especially if your only means of transport are some tiny wheels. Actually, he does get a jetpack, so I don't know what I'm on about. Blood has no excuse to be this clumsy. Alright, coming up next is Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and it takes precisely 49 minutes and 42 seconds for us to see anyone touch water. The camera pans up right here, and at this exact instant, we can see the droid army coming in over the waves. Yeah, you could make an argument that maybe technically they aren't really main characters, but I don't know, it feels like it's good enough. It is crazy how many environments this movie has though, I mean George Lucas really just threw in every kind of planet that he could think of. Sinkholes, mushrooms, lava, you name it, he had it. But whoa, 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 wait, do you see what I see? Is that, is that a huge forehead? Goodness gracious it is, it's Ryan Johnson, and that can only mean one thing, coming in at the number 8 spot, we have The Last Jedi. Ah, uh, thank you for this absolute work of art, Ryan, everyone loves this movie, I'm sure, and I'm so glad you included water in it. 
On a serious note though, I gotta hand it to Ryan over here. He did make this the easiest Star Wars movie to find water in on this entire list. Because at 52 minutes and 27 seconds, to find out if it is in fact raining, Ray Palpatine reaches out her hand from under the Millennium Falcon and boom, give that sucker a check mark because she just touched water. Thank you for making my job easier, Ryan. I think it may be one of the few things that you've actually done right. We're getting towards the end now and at number nine, we have Rogue One. What if I were to tell you that this movie has an entire scene set completely underwater? I'm talking full scuba suits, breathing devices, weird shark guys, it has all of this and you've just forgotten. Yeah, you're right, I'd totally be lying because for Rogue One, it's just rain. That's it, just rain at 59 minutes and 53 seconds. A bunch of characters are just walking around and it is in fact raining out. That's it. Man, that's lame. I feel like a good third of the movies on this list have just ended up being rain. Who would have thought? But you know what? It is what it is. Let's just get into the last two Star Wars movies on this list. Oh, and if you're still watching, thank you very much by the way, then how about this? We'll make a little secret code for you guys who watch the entire video. Just go into the comments and type, quote, let's see Andrew Eubanks touch water in every Star Wars movie. That'll confuse everyone else. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. At the second to last spot, we have finally crossed the one hour mark with the rise of Skywalker. It takes one hour, 18 minutes and 50 seconds for Finn here to get force pushed into a giant wave on the ruins of the second Death Star. Personally, I'd be freaking livid if my friend got me drenched while I was in my clothes, but Finn did basically become a background character. So maybe that's why we don't hear any complaints from him. All right, we have reached the final movie on this list and process of elimination dictates that you probably know what it is. That's right, you know it, you love it. It is none other than Star Wars episode 4, A New Hope. It takes them 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 9 seconds to fall into the trash compactor, which disgustingly enough turns out to have a good 4 feet of water for the trash to soak in. Pretty nasty. But honestly, we're just lucky that there's even water at all, because there is not a single blade of grass in A New Hope, not one. But speaking of grass, you need to watch this video right here, where I found how long it takes for any character to touch grass in every Star Wars movie. I think you'll really like it, and thank you very much for watching.